In this video, I want to talk to you about data that uh, appears to have some sort of seasonality to it so that uh, we can talk about how can we take our data and de-seasonalize it so we can see if there, you know, if there's a trend to it or if there's something going on so that we can forecast off of it. So what we're going to do here is I've, I have uh, some data points. I have 36 months worth of data starting in January of 2018. And you can see that we go up to December of 2020. So first, let's uh, let's take a look at this. I'm just going to take this data. Step one, I'm going to plot the data. So let's bring it up. Let's insert just a regular line chart. Take a look at it. And from the looks of it, there, and it's kind of hard to see. It, the, you know, it may look like it's going up somewhere. Here in, in November, you know, there's another good November peak, another good November peak. And it looks like it's kind of lower in September. So maybe there's something here. Let's let's just take this graph and I'm gonna move it off to the side here so we can we can come back to it later if we need it. Let's go in now, let's let's take a and break this stuff down. It kind of looked to me from that first look. Maybe, maybe there's something that's going on on a, an annual basis. So let's take and set this up. Let's say we're going to, let's look at Januarys, all my Januarys, all my Februarys, all my Marches. Grab this. I'm going to pull this out through December. Uh, I'm going to take and copy this very first year. Um, I'm paste it in. Let's get the second year, January through December. Let's copy it, bring it down. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get all my, you know, I'm trying to get all my Januarys together, trying to get all my Februarys together. Um, copy it, bring it back over, paste it in. Now that we have all of our Januarys together, let's let's take another look at this data. Uh, let's insert a line. Oh, okay. You know what? It, it does. Now that we've got all of our Januarys together, it does look like February goes up, March is coming back down. We drop in September, we go up in October, and then we hit a peak in December. So there does appear to be some sort of seasonality uh, associated with it. So let's take, I'm going to move this chart off to the side so we can not look at it for a second. Let's let's see what happens if we take the average of each month. Okay? Equals the average. I'll pull this across. On average, December looks like it's our biggest month at 36. On average, it looks like oh, January's our lowest at 22. I'm going to pull these guys down just a little bit so we have a little more room to work. Let's take an average of averages. Average of averages really is just saying, you know, on what's the average for each 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 one of our months. I can do that by taking the average of the averages. Okay, so 27.2 is the average that we really do have in a month. Let's put in a seasonality constant. Seasonality constant is really saying what is, what does January look like compared to my overall average? Wow. January is only really 83% of my average. I can do the same thing with February and find out February is a little bit higher. It's almost it's almost 14% above average. Now let me show you what we can do with this formula to lock it in and, and move things faster. I'm trying to continue to use this M column and if I grab this and pull it across it's this is going to start trying to uh, pick up other data. So if I take and put a 
dollar sign in front of M. It says do not move off of the M column. You can see that that didn't change anything there. However, if I grab now, right click and drag it, this last one says take 36 and divide it by 27.22. Okay, so what I've just done is I have seasonality constants. Seasonality constants are 83% uh, for January, 13, 14% uh, almost above for February, and those are the constants for each and every one of my months. I'm going to take and copy these, and then I'm going to do a paste special because I, I don't want the formulas to come with me, I just want the values to come with me. So I'm going to do a paste special, I'm going to do another paste special so that I'm getting the seasonality constants below each one of the respective months. What I mean by that is January of 20 has a seasonality constant of 0.832, which is what I've already calculated. All right, now that I have, now that I have the data of my seasonality constants down here, I can now come in and de-seasonalize my data. And what I'm going to do is let me let me take this data here. I'm going to pull this line, copy it, paste it in. That way I can come in and do to de-seasonalize January, I take my January data, I divide it by my seasonality constant. I'm going to do that for each and every one of these. So as you could, I'm going to pull this across. So now this is deseasonalized data. We came up with seasonality constants. We applied it to the raw data. And so let me, let's take this and let's plot this line out now. We've deseasonalized all the data based on our seasonality constants. I'm going to add a line. Now look at this new line that we have. It does look like there's more bumps and everything else, but the truth is now we are in a range that is um, really, really a tight little uh, group. Um, somewhere between 25 and 30. Look at what we had before. Before we were dropping well down below uh, 20 and we're going way up above 35. So deseasonalizing our data really has created this situation where the you know the, the, the data looks very um, very much like a uh, uh, we flattened it out if you will. Our new maxes are in the range of 30. Our new mins are in the range of, uh, of 25. So you can kind of see from looking at this data that uh, deseasonalizing it uh, did help us in a way. So the reason that this is important for seasonality purposes, if I wanted to go in here now and forecast for the future, I can look to see if there's any kind of trend. So I'm adding a trend line here. displaying the R squared value, the equation on the chart. It's really showing us here that, that our R squared, there's not much real trend going on here. You know, we look for an R squared above about, about a point uh, five. It's also showing that the change in slope here is really low. I mean, it's, it's in the zeros. There doesn't appear to be much of a trend at all here. That's, it's fairly flat um, with this data. So if I was going to go in here and I was going to try to forecast January of 2021, I would probably be fairly confident in saying that, that our real number uh, that's going to happen here is probably going to be somewhere um, with our overall average that we have based on a seasonality. If I go back over here to my Januaries, it may even make sense for me to, for January to pick um, a value for
for my forecast around 23. That's what it's kind of been running along uh, over time. There doesn't appear to be any trend here. Might make sense to forecast February to be somewhere around 31. Uh, so that's the whole purpose of our, the way that you deseasonalize data, the way that you can come in and now forecast using seasonalized or deseasonalized data.